quarterback himself. So um, I just think there's been a lot of time and effort spent in making sure we're diligent in that process alone. How do you keep the freshmen? They've been wonderful through whatever eight yeah. games, um, seemingly grounded and whatever. How do you keep them grounded for the final four, knowing that you're now in, they're now played on a team that's in first place and can win the big or win the Big Twelve regular season? You know, it's so much out there. How do you keep them grounded? Yeah, I, I think you know our, our program has really been its best when we've just worried about what's going on here and now and. You know, I, I think the the whole thing with this group, I think it's already passed that test in a way because I think people wrote them off probably in May. Um, and they've had the ability to just worry about the process that it takes to be successful. And I, I really, that's got to start at the top. And the top for us is our senior leadership that we've been really fortunate to have. I think they have done a great job of demanding to come to work every day and, and the nice thing about being a freshman you don't know that it's even November you know you're just trying to survive the next day and and still learn what it takes to be successful and you know I, I think the thing that that young group really has is they've got a, a really great competitive spirit they really there there's an intent to love the sport of football and be their best and the one thing is how those guys have practiced is probably the most impressive part to me and, you know, so that that's really what it is. It's the ability. And there's so much growth out there. You know, we're we're far from anywhere close to a finished product. I think the, you know, the highs and lows that they continue to have within football games, uh, the competitiveness to get better day in and day out has is, is been really fun to watch. To piggyback on both those questions, Brendan Black didn't start on Saturday, but I think played all or most of the second half. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, you talked about what got him on the field. What's kept him on the field? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I just think consistency, you know, he, he is uh, probably some of those words that I just used as the freshman class in its whole competitive spirit, tough, um, great consistency in how he approaches, you know, his process. And, you know, he's a guy that I, I know probably early in the season was a was a big jolt to that offensive line. And it was because just, man, really how he came in, the maturity that he had in terms of what it looks like to practice every day. And um, I, he, that's never wavered. And I, I think that's just allowed him to show up and play football at a really high rate with, with great attitude and effort. And the thing that's fun about him is he, he's only continuing to progress because he does love football. And the fundamental and technique is really growing as the weeks go, which is exciting. He, he's played really good football. This is kind of a big picture question, but I think you've burnt six or seven red shirts this year. I'm curious if you think the transfer portal has any impact on how your staff or staffs around the country go about playing true freshmen when they get to campus. Yeah, I, I don't know what other people think. I, 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 to me, that doesn't, you know, there's not one ounce of thought into that, to be quite honest with you. I've never worried about the transfer portal and really don't care much about it. You know, I think my big thing is how do we give our team the best opportunity to be successful? And I think having meaningful conversations with our young men, um, you know, as I've said many times, I'd rather play our kids too late than too early, um, probably sometimes to a fault because I, I want them that when their shot and opportunity comes, I want it to, them to be able to take advantage of it. Um, and, you know, I think that's the thing that's been exciting about all of our young men that have got into the game. I think they've they've played good football. And, and to me, that means they've been ready. They've earned the right to get on the field and help our team be successful. I know you guys don't know exactly who's going to start at quarterback for KU. But if it is Jason Bean, he's someone who has a ton of speed that's well documented. Mm -hmm. How do you simulate practicing against that for a scout team? Yeah, it's tough. And, you know, uh, again, you know, no matter who it is, is elite speed at quarterback. I think that's the one thing they've got is – um, they've got, you know, two elite elite quarterbacks and two guys that really have the ability to challenge in the running game from the quarterback position. So um, probably the only thing that's beneficial is we've played, you know, some some mobile quarterbacks already this year, and um, you got to hang your hat on some of that. And, and then, like you said, try to do your best and simulate it in practice. Why are freshmen better today, better able to play immediately than they were Oh, back in your day, yeah. maybe. Yeah, you're in your right. I, I, I just think you know the evolution of training. Um, you know, I, I think the, I think the one thing you see out there, even just you know, with my own kids watching, you know, the development happen at just a faster rate. You know, in terms of, you know, personal trainers or how they're training, and you know, you look at Brendan, and you know, Brendan was on, you know, he was, you know, I told you he came in here benched 400 pounds, one of the strongest guys in our program already, and. 
you know, I, I think to me, there's just so many ways now today between 15, 16, 17 years old that you can go and really hone your craft and start to make progress to where you're physically able to get to the collegiate level and at least be ready. Um, you know, we've talked about this before. It's, it's more than just physical readiness. Um, you got to be mentally ready as well. But I, I think that was always the area that there was probably a little bit of time that it was just, man, an 18 year old growing to a 19 and 20 year old to compete against 22 or 23 year olds. Um, but I, th I feel like that gaps, you know, continue to shorten. And I think obviously with the nutrition, it, you know, just globally in the last 10 years becoming such a different ball game. I think even you see high school programs and high school players really understanding that value coming in here. Um, I think all those things have allowed young people to, to be more ready to compete at this level collegiately. Matt, we, I asked John just a few minutes ago about the takeaway number, the big takeaway number. Yep. And he said, whether it's high or low, more or less, you can't really explain why it's high yeah. or low, but you can't explain the commitment the program has to forcing them. I mean, how would you describe just how you guys get approach drilling that yeah. aspect and also just your guys, you know, great ability to make plays on the ball this year? Yeah, I mean, I think that that was number one, the first thing that I talked about in January. I mean, you know, it was the worst turnover margin a year ago that we've had since we've been here. And, you know, we, I, You've, you're sick of hearing me say at Iowa State you have to win in the margins, but I think you guys know that that's true. And so you, you can spin it however you want, but you have to do the little things well to win football games. And it starts with the ball. And that was a thing where, to me, you know, defensively we created some turnovers a year ago. It was really offensively we did a, a really poor job of taking care of the football. And I think that was something that, you know, have, was a focal point meeting number one when we came back is how do we get ourselves back on the right side of the turnover margin and understanding that that margin really does say your investment to team and, you know, your willingness to take care of the football, man, doing everything in our power to go get the football. And, you know, we, we really haven't changed how we practice it. You know, it's always been a, a period in practice that has been a, a focal point for us. But I think just the intent of understanding, you know, you, it's the old Belichickism of you got to learn how not to beat yourself before you can learn how to win, right? And I, I think that was something that was statement number one in team meeting number one when we came back. And, you know, so far we've been able to do a better job and, and we can still get better. You know, it wasn't perfect even on Saturday, but, um, you know, we left some out there and had the ability to, to not, not turn them all over, but it's got to continue to get better for us if we want to be the team that we, we feel like we've got the ability to be. Staying in that vein of doing a better job, um, offensively it feels like extending drives was an issue or not doing it last mm -hmm. year and now. Jalen in particular has emerged as a big third down yep. guy. You, you need, you know, not just him but others. But how would you describe the way the offense has better been able to extend drives and therefore get more points? Yeah, I, I think a lot of that has been, again, you go look back on the point piece of that even from a year ago, where so many of those turnovers came was inside the 25 yard line, right? And th that's debilitating. You know, you you move the football and then not have the ability to whether it's uh, you know, whether it's 3 or 7 points, that that's hard. And you know, I, I think that that is something that, you know, certainly we put a lot of time and effort into. Um, you know, the third down percentage, we're still probably not where we want to be. It was much better last week. Um, and I think that's just part of growing. I think that's part of growing as, as, you know, so many of these guys find roles within the offense. And I think Rocco's understanding of, you know, even the third down situation, is it third down and fourth down? Is it just third down? You know, what's that look like? And, and what's, the, what's the game look like? And so sometimes that third down percentage can be a little bit skewed. But I, I think that just the ability to take care of the ball, win the situation, what's the scoreboard, what's the time on the game, how do we win the situation in that moment? And I do think there's been great awareness of that with our kids. Coach, Matt, is there, oh, is there a uh, extra level of motivation found either with yourself, your staff, or with your team in the locker room to be in a Big 12 race right now as opposed to where you guys were at last year? Can you feel that difference and that motivating factor? Or is it kind of just all eyes on one thing and whatever game is in front of us? Yeah, I think I think the the second part of it is it is all eyes on one game, but I, I think the reality of, you know, we've never, and I know this this has got me in trouble many times. I got set up on this before, but I, I'll figure out how to say this eloquently. 
set up. It was not you, but it was a setup. Um, I think maybe one. back there set me up, but somebody <laughs> set me up. But the, the reality of it was, um, the, the, I think in college football, when you deal with 18 to 22 year olds, the, there, you have to understand that there is a process to be successful. And in our program, that process is the utmost importance. And, and it's not just playing on Saturday. It's, you know, it's how you go to class. It's how you, how you go into the weight room. It's how you perfect your process that when you get to the season, because football is funny, you only get 12 guaranteed games. And unlike maybe basketball where you get 30, and man, you get 12 shots to play your best. And I think what we've worked really hard on is this kind of day in, day out process throughout January, February, March, April, May. That's where we weren't very good a year ago. And, you know, and not just our players, our coaches, all of us, we all could have been better. And I, I think the, the reality is that's what you feel is different. And that's exciting because you can live with the result, whether it's positive or negative. You can look yourself in the mirror if you know, man, I've done everything in my power to be my best. And I, I think those things are what's energizing right now around this football team because there is a lot of youth and there's a lot of young people that are growing by the day. Um, it's not perfect, but their process to be perfect and be their best, that's what's been really fun about this team. Matt, how much fun is a big game under the lights in Jack Ray? Yeah, not much like it. You know, I, I think that's – that's one of the great things about being this time of year and playing really special football games is, you know, you, you can give back to our fan base who's been very loyal to us and, you know, playing meaningful games this time of year. And, and Jack Trice makes it really, really special, not only for um, our kids, but I know it makes it really special for our fan base who's been really loyal to us and in our football program for sure. We've talked a lot about the improvement offensively being leaps and browns in terms of production. I think on the other side of the ball, the improvements maybe been more incremental, but just as important. Yeah. What have you seen from that group from going from pretty good to whatever that next level up is? Yeah, and, and, and I think we're, we're you know, the, the fun thing in both those areas is you still feel like there's, there's more steps to make. You know, I, I think the... You know, the defensive piece of it, you know, you, you, you lose Gary early, who was such an anchor to this team and really probably the only anchor of that front six, um, you know, and I, I feel like that group got thrown into the fire and a lot of those guys had to grow up fast. And, you know, I, I think one of the things that's been fun is you just see them just getting better every week. And, you know, I, I think the consistency in, in with Tyson and, and, you know, Eli Rashid, I think those guys do a phenomenal job of developing those units. And, you know, I, I think, you know, how you've seen Will McLaughlin start to play great football, it's been really fun. Jack and Bacon, those guys are playing great football. You know, Cooper Ebel's now stepping into an important role at Will Linebacker and, you know, backing up Gary and doing a great job. And then that D-line, I think those guys just keep making profound steps. And, again, I, the neat thing there is there's been great players there in the past that have been in those rooms. Those guys have seen what it looks like. And they've left a great legacy in the, those rooms to, you know, kind of give a pathway of, man, here's what it looks like, here's what the standard looks like, and here's where we're trying to get you. So um, I think all those things have certainly aided us for sure. Yeah, I think probably questionable. You know, he was out there today. Um, you know, I, I think we'll know a lot more probably by the time we get to game time. I'd say it's 50-50 right now. The, uh, you, you mentioned a lot of the linebackers there just to, uh, with Travis's question, but with how Kansas plays offensively, how big is it going to be to get good linebacker play again this week? With how Kansas plays, you need 11 guys playing really good football or you're going to be in big trouble. You know, I mean, I think that's the thing that they do such a great job of is that you look at a team probably on the opposite side that they have everybody back. All 11 players have played a ton of minutes, not just for two years, but for some of these guys, four or five years. I mean, this is the most veteran offense that we've played by, by far. And, you know, they they can challenge you in every way. And, and you see it. There's maturity on that videotape. They're making critical plays. And they don't just stress the linebackers. They stress every single player on the field to play their position and play their role. And you're going to have to play great team defense if you want to play great defense against this offense. And Jack Sadowski, Will McLaughlin, those guys seem like they each maybe had their best yeah. games so far, especially Jack. He was really in on, on a lot. Yeah, I, I, again, I think those guys have grown by by the week. And, you know, I, I think even for those guys, there was a little bit of positivity of getting to a bye week and 
man, having a chance to take a, take a step back and evaluate themselves and really go back to work on their craft fundamentally. And I, I think fundamentally, we were a better football team Saturday than we've been, which I thought was a real positive. And it, it t I think it showed us that we, we used our bye week wisely from that standpoint, for sure. Coach, so going back to your coaching career here at Iowa State, you've coached many great football players, and some of which actually went to the highest levels of the NFL, like a Brock Purdy or Brees Hall. What does it mean for players like them to like showcase their high level in like the NFL with all showing this, not just this football program, but to the university itself? Yeah, I, I think it's big. You know, I, I think those are things that um, you know we're really proud of because, and I know I've said this a couple times that, you know, in my opinion, that was never. It's never about what they're doing, but it's how they're doing it. And I think, you know, you, you see the character that Brock handles himself with not just the success at the next level, but how he does it. And, you know, it's what you saw here for four years. And, you know, he's never changed. And honestly, you know, you turn the Jets game on and you, you see the stadium chanting Brees' name and you watch how he plays and then how he carries himself. And, you know, you, uh, I think Will McDonald had a big play, you know, on special teams on, on Sunday. And it's, it, it's rewarding because, again, all those young men, they weren't just great players. They were great humans. And I think how they continue to not only represent their family and certainly their high schools where they came from, but certainly Iowa State University on top of it, it's been really special. And it's, again, it, it's great for our young guys in our program to see this is what success looks like, not just on the field, but off the field. You talked a little bit earlier about the process and the day-to-day -day from the player's perspective. but. From a coach's perspective, how does that influence your snap-to-snap -snap decision in the game to not be result-oriented of deciding <laughs> to punt in this situation or go for it in this situation, but being process-oriented of this is the right decision at this moment for the long-term game? Yeah, that that those are all tough. You know, those are those are those are thoughts of more how in game the flow of the game is going, and you know. Believe me, there's. I think that's the thing that keeps you up at night after every game as a head football coach because you're never going to be perfect. You, you always sit and think back, man, maybe I should have done this or maybe I should have went for it here or did that. And I, I think those are things that – those are in-the-moment decisions that you're trying to do what's best for the football team to be the best to win the football game. And, you know, I think there's – there's. I know we're in a very analytical world that has thoughts, and those are all good thoughts. But, you know, are those always what in, is the best for an 18- to 22-year-old group of young men that are trying to win a football game? And I think that's where we try to do a great job as a coaching staff before the game and then in the game making the adjustments to, to try to make the right calls for the flow of the game to win the football game. But, yeah, that's where uh, – that's where those those are what keep you up at night for sure after a football game. Anything else? All right, guys. Thank you.